Before you can start programming the imager module, it's a good idea to learn how to read the vector scope, and that's what I'm going to show you right now. In the polar sample view of the spectroscope, we have a half circle which represents the stereo image in 180 degrees. But at the center of that half circle, you can see a V-shaped thread right here, and that represents 90 degrees of that 180 degree circle, and that's where most of the audio information displayed on the vectorscope is going to reside as long as you don't have problems with an audio file. And I'll show you some of those problems a little bit later. But if we were to play some audio into this polar sample view, we can get an idea of what we're looking at. And I'm going to use my friend Olaf Basowski's tune, Duende, here to do so. So let's get some audio playing so that you can see how things look in the vectorscope when it's in its polar sample mode. Now what you're going to see here is a spray pattern. These little dots are known as dots per sample. And what happens is, as the music is being played in the center channel, you can see more information contained in this 90 degree angle in the center. And that shows you that the information is in phase, and as far as the stereo image goes, it's very balanced between the left side and the right side but some of those frequencies actually spray out to the left and right, and those indicate things that are in the stereo image on the sides of the audio, so the left and right sides of the audio. So when you play back an audio file that is in stereo, you should be able to see a lot of information here in that 90 degree wedge, and not so much information on the left and right hand sides. And along with that, we can look at this phase correlation meter. You can see this tiny little dot bouncing up and down from zero to plus one, or if you had a phase problem, you would see that little dot bouncing between zero and minus one, and I'll show that to you in just a moment. But getting back to the polar sample view, you can see that there are a lot more high frequencies in the music right now, and it's starting to fill up that 90 degree angle. But let's look at it in the polar level view. The polar level view can also show you the same sort of information, but instead of showing you dots per sample, it's going to plot these rays on the screen, and you can see that the vast majority of the audio in this file is located in that center wedge, that 90 degree angle at the center. And then on the left and right hand side, we do see some stereo levels happening on the left and right sides. And at the bottom of the polar sample window, you can see this little dot, which indicates where the energy is in the audio file whether it's weighted too far to the left or too far to the right, or if it's properly placed near the center of the audio. That way you can make sure that you don't have a gain mismatch on the left channel versus the right channel. And that can help our eyes see what our ears are hearing as far as how much energy is contained on the left and right channels of that stereo audio file. Now the last mode is called the Lissajou mode, and this is quite a bit different than the half circle of 180 degrees. And instead of a half circle, we get this diamond shape, but it has the same sort of dots per sample display as the polar sample. But you'll notice that most of the energy in this particular file is located in a vertical angle from top to bottom. And the Lissajou mode shows you what an oscilloscope would see as far as dots per sample. So if your music was in phase and had most of its energy in the center, then you would see a vertical line. And I'll show you in just a moment what things look like when they're out of phase. So let me call up a file that has a phase problem and show you how the vectorscope can help point those out. So here's a piece of audio that does have a phase problem. And I've got the vectorscope set back to its polar sample mode. Let's play this file so that you can see what's happening in the vectorscope. Because one of the channels of this stereo audio file is 180 degrees out of phase, all of that out of phase information is showing up in the left and right hand side of the polar sample view, and you can see there's very little information where it should be in the center wedge. The same is true of the polar level view. You can see that most of those rays are pointing straight out to the left or to the right with very little information in the center. So even though this little meter is still in the center, it's showing us where the energy of the audio file is. But it's that phase correlation meter over here that's really showing us what we need to know. You can see that that little dot is bouncing below zero and going into the negative territory. 
that's a good indicator of a phase problem. And then if you go to the Lissajou mode, and instead of displaying a vertical line, you're seeing that spray pattern in more of a horizontal line. So now that you know how to look at the stereo information in the vector scope, let's move on to programming the imager module.